very much for coming along to this collaboration event between STEM learning and GE. Um, as times change, uh, we will be looking at hosting more of these online events for schools, so please do keep an eye out for opportunities like this. But um, without further delay, I'd like to hand over to Mary Lisa and uh, get this webinar started. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Nabs. So a very, very big welcome and good afternoon to all of you. My name is Marilisa Vega um, and I co-lead the Community Investment Program for GE in the UK. Um, it is a real pleasure to be welcoming young people from schools across London, Manchester and all over the UK. Um, on behalf of the whole STEM Together team, we are delighted to be celebrating Ada Lovelace Day today. Um, and, and we're doing that by relaunching our virtual STEM inspiration program called Hashtag STEM Together. Um, and of course, by welcome you to our first Imagine with GE session. Um, through the next 60 minutes or so we, we have together today, um, please do make use of the Q&A function. So if you just click on that small speech bubble um, and ask our panelists any questions and, and make some comments, we'd love to hear from you. Um, what school you're joining us from, where you're joining us from, and your dream job. But then as well, this is meant to be very interactive. So throughout the session, please do ask us your questions and, and, and make some comments. Um, OK, so so firstly to. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we, we are using a new technology today called Teams Live Events, and that should work just fine. But in case you do experience any issues, try closing all the other applications on, on your computer or your phone um, and maximizing the, the Teams window. Um, and if you do experience a drop, log out and log back in. We recommend using Chrome or Edge if you're using a desktop. Um, and maybe sometimes a wire connection works better than Wi-Fi, but if all else, else fails, just as they say, reboot and log in again. Um, if, you do, if you do get dropped off for any reason, um, you can skip right to where you, where you dropped off um, because this is stream, this is streaming. Um, and, and just so you know as well, we are recording today's session. So please either remain anonymous or only use your first name or a nickname um, when, when you type in your, your questions and comments. So um, there, these are just some tips that we've learned to make the most of, of this session. Uh, we recommend trying to find a quiet place and getting really comfy, uh, turning off emails and phone, put, putting your phone on silent, switch it upside down. Um, this is this is your time um, and then as well you can you can take some notes because research does show that if, actually if you take notes um, you're more likely to to really absorb information um, so and and just and you know pick up those key facts so please do share your your ideas and ask questions in that q a function we'd really love to hear from you and make sure that we address as many of your questions as possible so we're we're everybody on this uh, panel we're members of ge which stands for general electric um, GE is a company that drives the world forward by tackling its biggest challenges. Uh, we need people with excellent STEM skills for our businesses to be successful. Um, and in the UK and Ireland, we have a program called STEM Inspiration, uh, which is designed to develop and inspire the next generation of scientists, engineers, and technologists like yourselves. Um, we do this through career conversations, dynamic STEM projects and workshops, student mentoring and teacher training. So now I'd like to introduce my lovely colleague, Hannah Lawrence. Hannah has just finished her Edison Engineering Development Program at GE Aviation 
and she's now got gotten the exciting new title of cyber investigator. Um, so I'll hand over to Hannah and she'll tell us more about uh, about the STEM Together program, which she co-founded. Over to you, Hannah. Thank you so much, Marilisa. So personally, I, I honestly love being introduced as a cyber investigator. I just think it sounds really cool. Um, so yeah, actually before, um, I'm not going to talk about me that much because um, I'm not who we want to see here. So I'm, I'm actually going to talk to you a bit about Ada Lovelace Day. So for those of you who don't know, so Ada Lovelace was an English mathematician and she worked alongside Charles Babbage to create the first calculator, which was also called the analytical engine. So she was really intelligent and she thought that calculators and machines were able to do more than just calculations themselves. And so, you know, she wrote the first ever algorithm. So that actually means that the first ever programmer is a female, which is something that I find as super duper important. Like it's awesome. Um, and I'm, I've, she's been an inspiration for me for years and I've used her as my examples for university interviews and everything. So I think she's a really, really great role model and it's always great to be the first of something. Talking of firsts, actually, like, like my, my nice segue, um, I'd like to introduce you to um, our newest STEM inspiration program, as Marilisa mentioned earlier, which we have called STEM Together. So I'm one of the co-founders of STEM Together, along with Sydney, who's going to be um, asking the questions today. So this is G's first ever online STEM inspiration platform that we developed during lockdown when we couldn't do any face to face STEM inspiration. So today's the official launch day of STEM Together. So we're really excited. And so STEM Together consists of some 10 week long projects, including an amazing mission to Mars project, a hackathon. So involving a mixture of programming and website building and a disaster drone project. We've also got some shorter worksheets as well that you don't have that you can complete alongside or just alternatively. And all of our projects are accredited to industrial cadet silver level, which is really cool. We'll send out the links to the STEM Together website um, at the end of the session. So um, yeah, we'll 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 let you um, if you have any questions about STEM Together, um, please post them in the chat in the um, question box and we'll get back to you. Um, so today we have the privilege of hearing some career journeys for three of our for our three amazing panelists. So we've got Hamda, Fifi and Margaret. I'll be moderating and Sydney and Marilisa will be keeping an eye on the questions and comments and we'll try and share as many of these as we can with our panel. So um, I'd like to introduce you to our first presenter. So um, up next, we've got um, Hamda Meyer, who's a software solution integrator and she works for GE Digital. Over to you, Hamda. Thank you very much, Hannah. Um, hello all, my name is Hamda Sophia Meir. I am a solution, software solution integrator, like Hannah said. Um, I've been working for GE Digital for just over two years now. Um, and I'm just going to talk you through my journey, a bit about me and what engineering means to me. Um, so a bit about me, I am um, a very social person. I like to travel. Um, I like to have, you know, I like to spend time with family and friends. Um, during this time in coronavirus, I've tried to um, bake as much, but it hasn't really been the most successful um, journey, let's say. Um, but I try to keep myself busy as much as I can. Um, I, me and my family moved from Somaliland, which is the northern region of the Horn of Africa, when I was six years old. Um, and in the Somali community, it's quite, it's very rare to find a woman in engineering, um, in tech, let alone engineering. And because of that, I think I have found it quite difficult to aspire to be an engineer, um, mainly because of the miseducation about what engineering is and what engineering could be. Um, but from a young age, I wanted to be so many different things. Um, like Marilisa, I wanted to be a ballerina at one stage. Um, I wanted to be a musician because I absolutely love Hannah Montana. <laughs> um, but having said that, my, my father is an electrical and electronic engineer. And um, even though he is an engineer, my perception and thoughts of what an engineer is were still very much skewed. 
um, my expectations of what a real engineer was, was never someone who, who you know, can just sit on a computer and problem solve. Um, my expectations were very much um, someone who's on site, you know, someone with a hard cap on, um, someone who's working on huge machinery. But like I said, in reality, I'm an engineer and I work from my computer at home um, and I problem solve every day. Um, in high school, my favourite subjects were maths and science. Um, I absolutely love maths, like Ada loves lace. Um, I, I just love the fact that there's one answer and, you know, to get to the answer, you just, ha you know, it might take a while, but, you know, you will eventually get to it and that rewarding feeling afterwards is, is amazing. I went to high school um, in Cardiff in a high school called Futsalan High School. And um, I had the opportunity to work on various projects with real companies who had real problems. And they gave us the opportunity to work through solutions, uh, some problems that they have and offer solutions uh, in a team. Following that, I went to university. I went to the University of South Wales to study electrical, electrical electronic engineering. Uh, the reason why I chose this degree is because it's a nice mix of hardware and software. And I, and I really wanted to get that mix in. It was a four year degree um, and in my third year, I was lucky enough to go work at GE Digital with an amazing team of interns who are right here. There were 10 of us in the GE Livingston site that's in Scotland. Um, and I had the opportunity to do so many things um, from you know working within the team that I've never met before, um, working with real customers across the world, um, based in some based in Belgium, some based in Wales, some based in Scotland. Um, and it was it was such an achievement for me to actually complete and execute some um, factory acceptance testing, which is basically testing of the software on site before they go live. And it's really improved my confidence skills um, and my education, you know, the the knowledge that I had that I learned in the two, first two years of my degree. Um, I then successfully graduated um, from electrical electronic engineering in 2018. Um, and I was offered a position at GE to work as a um, as a solution integrator. This is my amazing team um, that I used to see face to face, um, but now we're indoors, so we try and catch each other on um, teams now and then. Um, such an amazing team. I wouldn't trade them for the world, but you can see that there's only two of us, two women um, in the team. And um, prior to me going into university, um, I was always really apprehensive with being around too many males because I grew up in such a um, women dominated environment. Um, but I think as time goes on, that's changing slowly because of such innov uh, innovations, sorry, um, because of such, a, such programs like the GE STEM Together and the GE Girls Get Set. Um, and I, it gives me the opportunity to actually share my story to um, to the younger generation. I also had the opportunity to go to a few career fairs, um, one in Cardiff and one in Bristol, and also um, had the opportunity to work with some children in the Glas in Glasgow Primary School. Um, it was a great insight and such a such a rewarding experience to be able to have conversations with parents who are um, very unsure about whether their daughters can go into engineering or what engineering really is and sort of en educating them. Day to day, what I do is I work on a software that manages the electricity distribution. Um, so essentially how the electricity goes from the power plant all the way down to your home. Um, the software, work, me working on the software day to day is anything from um, jotting down requirements, going to sites, working with customers, um, having cake on my birthday, wait, lo waiting in long queues to go home. Um, it's a very broad job and um, I've learned so much technically and professionally, which is great. Um, to me, I found this really great definition of what an engineer is um, and I, I really giggled, so I thought I'd share it, but it is what it is. I mean, it's a person who gets excited about things no one really cares about. And I find that that really does I, I found that that personally does happen to me, especially in my friendship group and my family. No one really cares about anything as much as I do when it comes to um, tech stuff. But what engineering really means to me is someone who's creative, 
um, curious, someone who has someone who has imagination, um, inquisitive, and I think we all have those kind of characteristics within us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hamda. That was a really interesting talk. Um, I definitely learned a lot. I didn't know what a solutions integrator did, honestly. I thought it was, <laughs> yeah, I, de I definitely learn a lot every time I listen to these questions. I think it's really fascinating. So um, if anyone's got any questions, um, please put them in the um, um, in the Q&A. And um, uh, actually, um, I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, who was your role model growing up? Um, it's, it's going to sound somewhat cliche, but I would definitely say my mother. Um, like I said, we, we moved from I, as a family who moved from Somaliland at a young age and her not knowing English and putting herself through, um, you know, English school and making sure that she fends for her family. Um, it really speaks volume and, you know, I can only, I can only try and repay her back for everything she's done for me. And because of the strong person she is, I would just love to be just a percentage of that. Does that oh, <laughs> that really answers the question. I think that's really sweet. I love that. Um, Sydney, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Um, what projects are you currently working on, Hamda? Um, so right now, um, I'm just wrapping up on a proof of concept um, project, which is, uh, is for a Swedish company called Vattenfall. Um, and it's we're trying to basically prove that we have the capabilities to um, migrate data from their existing um, asset management system, which is one of their one of their softwares, to the Paran program, which is what we develop um, day in day out. Um, it's it my challenges from this proof of concept. I think the biggest one was definitely uh, copying and pasting Swedish words every day and trying to see what it means. You know, I've been on the project for nine months and I still don't know a word of Swedish and I don't know how to pronounce anything in Swedish. But um, it was a great insight to see how the sweet, how the Swedish, uh, how Swedish companies, um, m you know, um, actually manage their electricity and how it's different to the UK. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> Thanks. Sounds very interesting. We have a, another question. Um, how do you navigate being uh, in your role as with so little females, so few female fe female role models um, in your day to day job? Um, I think I try to I I try to remind myself that um, I don't think I focus on that too much. Um, I feel like I'm, you know, it's my journey and. If I need to do something, then I can get it done and sort of believing in myself and not somewhat not caring about the environment you're in. Um, as long as you're in a great team and you you know, you have peers who respect you. I don't think it's a huge issue about, um, you know, who's around you. And I think that's what we need to remember when uh, the discussion of women in, in engineering comes about. I completely agree with you. Thank you so much, Hamda. Um, I learned a lot. Yeah, much appreciated. Um, if you've got any more questions for Hamda, just type them in the Q&A and uh, Hamda can answer them shortly. So let's move on. Thank you. So let's move on to um, our next presenter. So next we have Fifi Votre, who's a molecular imaging global marketing leader uh, and it, he's on the accelerated leadership, leadership program um, as part of G Healthcare. So Fifi, over to you. Yeah, thanks Hannah. So first of all, that is a mouthful, uh, <laughs> is, uh, but we can shorten it to just being a, a, a global marketing leader in um, the GE healthcare business. So as you know, GE has many different businesses um, going from aviation to power and I'm in the healthcare sector. So uh, just I'll, I'll start off with a little bit about my career and my journey um, and then try to tell you guys, you know, you know what 
who is Fifi outside of his career as well, right? So there's lots of pictures there and I'm sure people might have some questions about that and I'll answer them shortly. So I am originally from Ghana, right? I, I was born there and I, I grew up there until, up until I was 10 and then moved to the UK, right? And, um, you know, I've always had this keen interest in technology and I was the designated tech person in my whole family and extended family. If you needed your iPhone fixed, then I'll come to Fifi. If you needed your computer fixed, that's me, right? Um, but actually, that's not what I wanted to do at, at the start. Um, I actually wanted to be a lawyer. And, you know, I went to school um, thinking, selecting uh, my GCSEs as well as A levels and thinking I'm going to become a lawyer until I was able to do like the research to say, okay, what exactly is involved in, in being a lawyer, right? And I found out there was a lot of reading. Um, I am maybe a little bit ashamed to say I don't really like a lot of reading. Um, and this is what, which made me think about what do I actually feel passionate about? And like I mentioned, all this time I've had this passion and enthusiasm for technology. So why not do something you love? Um, so I actually managed to change my A-levels um, about a couple of months into my first year in A-levels uh, into doing a computing, uh, computing A-level. I managed to get into the university of my choice, right, um, and actually went on to um, graduate uh, to get a master's in computer science. Now, I wasn't really the the top of the class or anything like that. I'm, I don't think of, my, of myself as like super smart or anything like that. Um, but I, I, well, one thing I would say is hard work pays off, right? Um, and, I've, and I've had a lot of failures along the way too. And of course, you guys can ask about that and I'll be happy to share. Um, I then landed my first role in within GE. So I've been in GE for just over five years now. Um, it's been my entire professional career. Um, but my first role was as a software engineer intern. Funny story about how I actually landed that, right? So you might have noticed my name. It's it's rather unusual, right? It's actually a Ghanaian name, but uh, most people, if they haven't seen my face or a picture of me, would think I'm a female. And that's exactly what uh, my employers thought, right? They have said, hey, let's look at the CV. Wow. Fifi, a female, um, plays rugby, wow, um, is really into his tech, and um, also a boxer, oh, we have to have her in. Anyway, of course, you can imagine the shock of uh, my employer's face when they saw me, but um, this, this, I say this story because it's a really good thing. It's, a, it's the fact that, you know, that's the thinking that we, we want to encourage, that let's give equal opportunity and be purposeful about um, 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 bringing these diverse groups into, into, into STEM. Um, so in my, software, in my software engineer internship, I think my highlight there was actually creating a mobile app which helped um, the early detection of Alzheimer's disease. Very, very important and extremely crucial um, to, to the world. Um, I then um, became a full software engineer where I worked on a number of um, small projects and bigger projects. Then um, I, I, I progressed and actually, you know, I became a nerd with some social skills, right? So before I was just pure nerd, Put me in a dark room, I'll program away, but it's like, hey, actually this guy can talk. So that's what actually the definition of a product owner is, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so as you can see in my journey, it's a lead technical product owner. So I was actually the middleman between the technical teams and the, um, and the customer as well. Now, uh, what this Actually, this was probably the highlight of my whole entire career in, in GE because I worked on this really, really exciting project, um, what I sometimes refer to as my baby, um, which was this virtual reality training tool, okay? Um, so typically virtual reality is used for gaming, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to use this, this technology, right, to train healthcare professionals on how to perform a procedure that could save lives with people who are having heart attacks, right? And you can see some of the imagery there. 
Um, and this was such an exciting project for me. Um, I got to travel the world with it. I started it, you know, by building it myself with a few prototypes and then um, brought a lot of other smarter people than me on, on board. Um, and we were able to create this amazing, amazing tool. Um, you know, travel, like I said, travel the world, um, work with a bunch of amazing, super smart doctors and such. And um, this slingshot actually my career to land in the current position I'm in, which is part of this um, GE's XLP program, which stands for Accelerated Leadership Program, right? So the Accelerated Leadership Program is aimed at uh, preparing employees for a global leadership role um, within the company. Um, so much, much bigger responsibilities, but in a very, very short time period. So it's an accelerator. That's where the X comes from, um, even though accelerated spells with an A. <laughs> um, and actually what it consists of is a number of very, very sh short projects, but then stretching you need to go into all sorts of different roles. So as you might have noticed, hey, this guy was a nerd. Now he's a marketer. Exactly. So that's that's part of the um, the XLP program. So enough about my career, right? Um, just a little bit about who I am, you know, outside of work. Okay. So when I'm not nerding out or or you know being in um, involved in my work, um, I actually am a avid boxer. So I I, I compete on an amateur level um, as well as a rugby player. And also, I love to bake. Actually, that's uh, the, the cake on the right is something I, I made for one of my friends. Um, it wasn't my best, but uh, it's the one <laughs> picture I could probably find. So, yeah. Um, and, and then one last thing I wanted to kind of get to before I open up for questions is um, what actually got me into STEM volunteering? Right. So you probably can guess from my my tone of voice, I'm super passionate about technology and uh, building software with having real world impact. Now, that's that's a that's a feeling, you know, it's just unmeasurable. And I want to be able to spread that and give people the opportunity to be able to have that same similar experience. Right. Um, the other thing, too, is that, right, there's power in numbers. It can't just be me or a few number of STEM um, career focused people who are making the world a uh, progress in the future, there's power in numbers. And the more STEM focused careers we have, the closer we can get to things like flying cars and space explorations and missions to Mars and stuff like that, right? Um, so I want to be able to help increase that pool of super smart people and people working in STEM, STEM focused careers, right? Um, the other thing too is you know there's a lot of smart people in the world right um you know and but the thing is there aren't a lot of th those there's not a lot of them who actually are aware of these um the, these opportunities within stem careers or even have access to them and this is something i'm really really passionate about right M enabling access to people who don't necessarily won't come won't be um placed in any, whether it's a social or economical position to be able to uh, to learn about these opportunities. And I, I, I wanna do this through STEM volunteering. Um, and then um, last thing, you know, which is probably, I guess, more of a selfish thing, probably, but it's actually um, the, the feeling I get from inspiring somebody or to, to see that moment where, you know, you teach somebody how to do something um, or build something, right? And the smile on their face and the excitement that they have, that that for me is like, it's it's, it's such an amazing feeling. So yeah, um, that's pretty much about me. And I, I, I'd, I'd hope that there's quite a few questions. Um, so yeah, I'm ready to answer them. Any questions, Sydney? Um, yes, we have a few questions. Okay. Um, the first one is from Harris Pursley, Pursley School. Sorry. Um, how did you manage to change midway through your A levels? Wasn't that a difficult one? Yes, it, it actually was. Um, there was a lot of convincing. Um, luckily, there hadn't been any exams or anything like that that had happened, so it was 
you know, you start your school year September, I managed to change around uh, early November sort of time. I think I just had a very lucky, flexible school who understood my position um, and just enabled me to do that. But one thing I would say, if you don't ask, you don't get. So it might not just be my school, it's just, you might just actually have to just ask, really. That's great that you got to um, change them. Mm -hmm. um, so another probably a bit of a double whammy here. So the, one of the questions is how did you um, get your app to detect um, Alzheimer's? Mm -hmm. And um, sort of on the similar trend, do you still do much engineering in your current job? Mm, okay, good, good, good questions. So um, how did I get the app to detect early on? Alzheimer's. Okay, um, so it's a little bit of a scientific um, question, I guess, and I'll, I'll try not to go into too much of the science about it. But uh, the app really actually was helped into train physicians on how they detect Alzheimer's, first of all. Um, that was, I should have clarified there. We have a drug within healthcare which is able to um, detect something called beta amyloid. Um, deposit. So it's like plaque in your brain, right? Um, when you go in for a scan, so um, it's actually going to be something called a PET scan, but uh, in, if you don't know what a PET scan is, like an MR or a CT, it's just a different type of it. And those images can then be fed into the app, and then the, the app can then train healthcare professionals on how to say, okay, this person is positive for, for a um, neurological decline or, or not, meaning Alzheimer's or not. Then in terms of do I do any actual engineering in my current role, the answer directly is no, but I have to say I love programming so much. I do that in my free time. I work on personal projects all the time, um, especially when it comes to STEM as well, right? So we have a great group of software engineers in the, in the healthcare business. Um, and we've had a good steady stream of software engineers interns who I always manage to um, maybe twist their arm a little bit, but they enjoy it anyway, um, to actually work with me to, to build really, really cool software um, for either STEM or for uh, any sort of um, improvements in our office work life. So yeah, I always very much get involved in that stuff too. Um, any other questions? Um, so perhaps one for both Hamda and uh, you, Fifi. Mm -hmm. um, how did you go about choosing your your internship and was it difficult to get it and was GE your only option? Mm, okay, that's a good question. So remember I mentioned, um, you know, I, I've had failures, right? Um, and I think that's one thing um, not a lot of people are comfortable with, right? That, you know, they, they have this fear of failure, but that's how you grow, okay? So I was on a, in my, in my uh, university, I was um, actually supposed to be on a course where halfway through my course, I was supposed to get a placement within, um, uh, within my course, within my, yeah. And um, I actually applied for so many different places and I didn't get into a single one of them. And GE was actually one of the places I actually um, applied for, right? um to get an internship so i ended up having to progress to my third year because that placement year was supposed to happen after the second um and then my fourth and then tried applying to ge once again it was actually the luckily the first time i tried and um it was just i guess just i'm probably a christian but i'll say grace that just um enabled me to to get that opportunity um, I, I spoke to you about the, the story. It could have been a diversity high, which I'm still grateful for. Um, but to be honest, perseverance. Perseverance is what, what it comes down to. Um, and then there was a second part to that question, wasn't there? Or no? Maybe not. Uh, no, just was GE your only option and how was it difficult? Right, yeah. So it was, if GE was not my only option the first time around, the second time around it was. That's great. And yourself, Hamda? Um, I would definitely say, like he said, perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. I 
um, started to apply in January um, of the academic year um, of my second year, sorry. And um, I just applied for everywhere. I was just so desperate to get technical, um, technical experience um, in power machines. And I remember I got a position, you know, I, I had a few rejections, maybe a few is an understatement, but I had a few <laughs> rejections. And, um, and I remember when I applied for GE, there was a few positions that I applied for and they said no to me. And when I was giving up in, um, I think it was late April, just before exam season, um, I got a call, I got an email from HR saying, oh yeah, there's a position here, would you like it? And I thought, Oh, what are the chances? But I have to carry on, like I have to keep going. Um, went for the interview and successfully got it, and here I am. So it did take a while. Um, you know, I I was I was on the edge of losing hope, but I still carried on going. Um, and GE wasn't uh, it wasn't the, my first option, but it was my top five. I would definitely say. But like I said, I did apply for a lot of places and got got rejected for a lot of places. So. I'm grateful regardless. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, they're really great answers. Um, and yeah, Fifi just saying the cake made me look, made me really, really hungry. So I'm going to say thank you for that, I suppose. Um, so let's move on to our final presenter of the afternoon. So uh, next up, we have Margaret Pang, who's on the Edison, uh, sorry, the Engineering Degree Apprenticeship Programme. Um, and uh, yeah, Margaret's going to tell you a bit about her story. So Margaret, over to you. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so as Hannah said, my name is Margaret Pang and I'm on the Engineering Degree Apprenticeship at GE Aviation in Cheltenham. Um, so this year I've just started my fifth and final year on the apprenticeship so I'm actually very excited to almost be finishing because it's been a long four years. Um, and I'm here today just to tell you a bit about how I got into engineering starting from my very first day in primary school. So this is me then um, and I, I had a very average childhood. Sure I kind of got upset when my brother would kind of get Legos for Christmas um, but he never knew when I borrowed them and played with them, um, so everything turned out fine. Um, outside of school, I have quite a lot of hobbies. I do a bit of music. Um, so here you can see um, there's me performing at the Birmingham Symphony Hall and the Royal Albert Hall, which I'm super proud of. I play a bit of table tennis, archery um, and a bit of church barring. I like to try a bit of everything, get to know it, and stop if I don't like it. But one thing I've always liked doing is solving puzzles. So on the screen, you can see some some of um, my collection of Rubik's Cubes. I actually have a whole briefcase full of them, um, but not just Rubik's Cubes, any sort of Sudoku's, any sort of puzzles like that. And in school, my favourite subjects were maths and science. So I joined the school STEM club and we did some of the best activities ever. I remember making boomerangs and egg parachutes, looking at different flame colours. And it was part of the STEM club at school um, where I got to attend one of GE's Girls Get Set events. So Girls Get Set is um, celebrating its 10th anniversary this year and it was started to introduce um, STEM careers to girls and let them know their different options that they could take after school. Um, I still remember my first Girls Get Set event and it was a Dragon's Den activity. We were making a water collector for third world countries. So this is me presenting our idea. And what we designed was an elephant that was doing a handstand. So it was collecting the water, rainwater, and its trunk was the tap that it would then, um, that people would then come and get the water from it. Um, so I, I remember vividly um, all my experiences from Girls Get Set in School because it was an amazing program that I went along to. Um, they had lots of girls there all from different schools around the county, all coming together, all with the same interest. And that was really special for me because in my school, I was going to an all girls school. I was one of very few students that enjoyed maths and science. And so coming from Girls Get Set, I found out about work experience. Um, so I did work experience with GE um, and then a couple of other 
engineering companies as well. Um, them being Renishaw and EDF, trying out lots of different types of engineering because engineering is a huge area. There's lots of things to try and coming back into school after doing um, work experience, I knew I wanted to do engineering, but which route I would take, I had no idea about. So whether it was apprenticeship or university, both have their pros and cons. Um, I had lots of opinions coming at me and lots of advice or advising me to do different things, which wasn't very useful. But on the day that I got to school and got my results, I was absolutely delighted to find out that I got the grades I needed to start on the engineering degree apprenticeship at GE, which I absolutely love being on. Um, so I started the apprenticeship um, in a cohort of seven people, um, three girls and four boys. So that's us there on, on our first day. And doing a degree apprenticeship is absolutely amazing because you still get the um, academic side of going to university. So as part of the apprenticeship, we study part time for a degree. Um, so I'm still going to university, attending my lectures, but I get a lot of practical experience as well with that. So in my first year, um, my cohort created this game. It was called Ground Control and we made it all from scratch, designing all the electronics, all the code, and we took it to science festivals like Cheltenham Science Festival to show people what engineering is, what we do, and just have a little bit of fun. Alongside the academic side, we also do a lot of project work. So this is a picture of the Boeing 777X plane. Um, it had its first flight earlier this year, and one of my rotations that I did actually contributed um, to some of the parts on this plane. So it was a rotation I did in systems engineering, uh, but on the apprenticeship, we do rotations in lots of different disciplines. So we also do um, rotations in electronics engineering. And I remember the first time um, looking at a schematic and seeing something on there that I recognised that I learned from university, um, some of my lectures, and it was so cool. Um, but some of my, my favourite rotation that I've done has definitely got to be the one I've done in software tools, um, where I got to do lots of hands-on coding. Um, it was in Java and I was taking those schematics that we use for our power distribution panels and turning them into reports for the operators to use when they're building the panels that then go into planes that real people fly on. Um, recently, I've um, just moved um, into a new position into the cyber security team. So I'm super excited to find out more about how we protect the data and the people that are um, working in our company. Now, alongside the project work, we also do a lot of volunteering on the apprenticeship scheme. And in my third year, I was lucky enough to um, lead the Girls Get Set scheme we run. Um, so this picture is from one of the events, uh, my finals day, where we had over 100 students attend. And I this is something that I'm really passionate about, giving back and creating opportunities for students just as um, to inspire them, just as I was inspired when I was in school. And these are some of the words that they use to describe an engineer after they've come to one of our event days. And even though engineering can sometimes be difficult, it is definitely interesting. It's definitely exciting and very challenging, but I think that's a good thing. I'd like to finish off with this quote from Thomas Edison, who actually founded uh, GE. There's far more opportunity than there is ability. In school, I was definitely not at the top of my class, but I took every opportunity that I had, attending the Girls Get Set events, looking for volunteering, uh, volunteering work experience placements, and that is how I found out about how to get to where I am today. Thank you so much, Margaret. That was such a great presentation. Um, I love the panel of um, all female engineers. It's such a cool um, panel to see. And uh, yeah, such such interesting hobbies. It's so it's so cool. Um, so on that note, Sydney, do you have any questions? So we have one from a rugby school and they would like to know why software your software rotation was your favourite and which parts of the plane did you help on? <laughs> yeah, so um, software was definitely my favourite um, because in software you kind of get to make a little bit of changes to the software and see immediately 
um, the kind of output from that. So I could change a little bit of code to say make uh, make this report um, five lines long instead of the 102 lines long that it used to be. And I could just click a button. It'll take a, maybe a couple of minutes for the computer to process it. But then you could see right there what it is. Um, and also coding something you can definitely do at home in your own time. Um, so I'd learn something really cool at work and I'd go home and be like, I have to try that. Um, whereas with electronics, it's slightly harder because um, working for a company like GE, they work on a lot of big products and um, not often can you take those things home. And you can't take the software home either, but you can definitely take the skills that you've learned. Um, what I contributed to on a plane um, were the power distribution panels that I worked on. So um, both in my software rotation and in my systems rotation, where I was looking at um, the requirements and the testing of the power distribution panels. They um, go on a plane and they take the energy from the that are produced from the engines and distribute it to wherever it needs it most. Um, so whether it's uh, the lights on the in the cabin or the little screens you have in front of you or into the cockpit for the pilots um, that is definitely uh, very special to think about it doesn't make me potentially too comfortable flying on a plane again but it's all right because I know that's been checked by a lot of people that is funny you say that I feel the same way <laughs> um, uh, so you in particular have some, I think we all have some interesting hobbies, but um, a question perhaps to all of you, how do you think your hobbies that you do at home and that you've done in your spare time translate to the workplace if they do at all? Margaret, do you want to start with that one? Yeah, of course. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I learned from my hobbies that definitely transfers over to my work is the um, kind of commitment I have to those. So um, finding a hobby that you enjoy doing, committing to it, attending every week, getting to learn more about it, getting better and better at it is definitely something um, that helps me at work because um, I've done a lot of coding um, in my software rotation and coding isn't always easy. I spend a lot of time finding bugs um, in it and a lot of the time you'll change like maybe a few lines of code and you'll come up with a whole load of errors but that kind of commitment and perseverance to wanting to find what's right really enjoying what I'm doing um, has helped massively in not giving up and talking to different people getting to know them and finding the right people to help as well when you need them to. So um, I think it's a question for Hamda and sorry, Hamda, I see you unmuted yourself there. <laughs> uh, following that question, well, on top of that question, um, well, how do you feel as a female in the engineering environment? How do you feel that the competitiveness is and do your competitive hobbies, if you have any, help you in that part of your job? Um, that's a good question. Um, I. I would say yes. Um, I think obviously competition is always healthy, um, but making sure that you learn something from the competition, whether it's successful or unsuccessful. Um, and I definitely think that, you know, being able to, just like how Margaret was saying, committing to something, whether it be in a competition, in a task, wherever the case may be, um, you know, following through with that, I think is really important. I wouldn't say that I have much of a competitive streak, unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> but I do, um, I do take every, every experience as a lesson. Um, yeah, I think if that answers your question. I think it does. Um, Fifi, do you have any hobbies that may translate into the workplace? Um, yeah, um, so the thing about these these hobbies and such, they they build on your your soft skills. Um, and there's two things. 
they build on your soft skills as well as actually add a little bit of like diversity to especially when employers are looking at your cvs right especially when you you have very little experience on them so having them on there is actually extremely important um, it separates you from the competition um, makes your cv stand out then on the soft skills part um, you know, being part of, for example, in my case, uh, a rugby team, knowing how to play with a team, knowing that you, you're going to have different personalities on a team, um, how to associate and work with the team, right? Then I guess if I throw my baking into that, um, attention to detail, right? Um, you need to have that, especially when you're working on critical software, I'm sure I, um, someone like Margaret would know as well, you, you just make sure that things need to be extremely safe. Um, we have very, very rigorous, uh, what they call quality assurance processes in healthcare as well, right? Um, you can apply QA to be sure into bacon as well. So it's it's literally about, like I said, building those soft skills and just making um, yourself stand out. On the ground. Okay, that means, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I think um, probably one of the last questions we'll be asking this afternoon. Um, yes. What type of engineering gets you to be able to work in planes? I think we all have studied something different or have found our way into engineering through different paths. Um, so if you guys just want to elaborate on your degrees or what sparked the joy for you? I'll let the plane engineers go first. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely take this one first. Um, so obviously I work in aviation, um, so that's directly on planes, but you'll find that um, working in aerospace engineering, um, there is a lot of different types of engineering you can work on there. So whereas my favorites have been software engineering, there is definitely software on planes, but a plane is a piece of hardware. There's lots of hardware um, engineers. We've got electronic engineers. Uh, we've got test equipment engineers. We've got sustainment engineers. Um, so whatever kind of um, type of engineering you want to do, you can definitely find a role in aviation. Um, as to what path you can take, that depends person to person. So I chose the apprenticeship route because um, I know that engineering is a very practical um, area and I wanted that hands on experience alongside my academics. But going to university and studying aerospace engineering or whatever it may be and then finding a job in that would not put you at a disadvantage. Um, and doing an internship, um, if you're going to university, I definitely advise doing an internship, finding out exactly how a company works and getting that experience, because as Fifi said, that's excellent to put on your CV and that's exactly what employers are looking for. So just to, I guess, just to add to that, um, I don't tend to work on planes, of course, uh, but um, in regards to what types of engineering and such that you can do to get into an engineering role, um, we I've, I've hired um, software engineering interns and they have not necessarily done computer science, right, um, as an engineering role. There's actually more avenues to get into these types of engineering roles. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, like I said, a software engineer or computer science. You can put on courses online as well. Um, you know, I've had uh, software engineers who've really just learned hardware, um, but they've just been had that really keen interest in software engineer, engineering. And um, to be honest, at, the, at, at an internship level, once you get past an interview stage or once you get into the interview stage, a lot of employers are just looking for someone who's just willing to learn, right? Someone who can literally has got that hunger or that appetite for that and says, hey, I haven't done that yet, but I would love to learn that and I, I'm eager to do that. And this is how I'm, I'm trying to teach myself on how to do that. So um, yeah, I, I just it's slightly different take to what type of engineering gets you to build planes, but um, just to get you guys to understand that there's other avenues into getting into engineering too. 
On that note, I have friends that have studied physics and are now currently working um, on plane parts. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an engineering degree that gets you um, into this type of engineering. Um, so you both, both Hamda and Fifi, you mentioned you had some failures or lessons learned rather. Um, what do you think you made your application stand out uh, or how do you think a student can make the application stand out in when they're applying for internships, Margaret apprenticeships and Hannah full time jobs since you've recently done that? Um, can I can I take this? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would probably say um, extracurricular activities, hobbies like how Fifi and Margaret were saying um, to demonstrate both soft and technical um, skills, definitely. Um, as well as that, any any passions that you have, and demonstrating how you've how you can show what your passion is and what you've done to um, sort of work again, work with your passion to be a better person. Um, I would definitely say. I would definitely say that yeah with if as long as you put something that you're passionate about in the cv that an employee employee can see what you're passionate about um and also obviously it translates to the job that you're applying for um that will definitely help you and go a long way so um in, in addition to that it's it's not just also what you put on your paper as well it's also um a trick that's also worked for me in the past is your engagement with whoever um, you know it, you, who's going to be in, in interviewing you or looking at your CVs and such right so we live in a world where you have LinkedIn and you know you can find who you can find people very quickly and easily right um, be bold to be able to approach people with hey I've, I've got this really keen interest in this here's my CV right that it it um it actually sometimes helps you get ahead in the queue right because a lot of the processes of finding going through interviews and such it's it's very systematic and you know they might be looking for certain keywords and such but if you've had that personal engagement with somebody um that makes you at the top of their mind maybe make somebody take the time to give you a call or something like that. So there's um, there's also those other ways to make yourself stand out rather than just uh, well as well as should I say as what's also on your CV and uh, your experience as well. I completely agree with um, what both of you said. Yeah, the more you can do to stand out and showing passion and being willing and able to learn and being able to express that I think is just really important as well as like experience etc but it's just like being able to show that you you can be passionate is so key um, I think for sure um, okay thank you guys so much I think we're gonna wrap up now um, everyone correct me if I'm wrong but um, I think there's probably um, a good thing to do so um, I'd just like to say thank you so much to everyone who's participated, who's sent questions, who's listening in. Um, it's been, um, yeah, I've learned, I've learned a lot today. Um, th um, so I hope, I hope you have too. Thank you so much. We'll post some um, links um, in the chat about STEM Together. And um, if you've got any other questions, um, yeah, you can post them in the chat now and we'll try and get back. Um, and yeah, thank you from the GE in um, Imagine with GE team and the STEM Together team. Um, yeah, thank you. It's been it's been great. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your evening. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.